what's up guys welcome back to case daily programming today i'm going to show you guys the difference between post and pre-increment and before i start this video i just want to let you know guys that this example is going to take place in c sharp but bear in mind here that i'm not teaching you guys a programming language this is not a c sharp based video this is the concept based video so post increment no matter if you're using c sharp java c or whatever language that supports the concept the behavior throughout those languages is the same. So this is the concept based video and not a C sharp based video. So without wasting any of your time, let's get straight into this. To increment, it means to increase by a fixed scale. So in this example, it means to increase by the value of one. So remember when you started uh, programming and you were used to something like this. And if I just write the output of this code, let's just make this more readable by saying we want the value of B. And now here the output is as what we expect. So our A is one and our B is the value of A plus one. So that means we added one to the value of A and assigned it to B. And then you discovered something like this. You discovered something like this. And now if we execute this code, the output expected should be the same as the one we had in our previous example. So let me just execute this. And now you can see that B is it's equal to two. So this, this is an example of pre-increment. Post-increment works different. So I'm gonna write an example of post-increment. So this is a post-increment. So what post and pre means is, you know, pre means before and post means after. So if you look at the values here with pre increment, the increment sign are always before your value and the in post uh, increments, the increment sign are always after your value. So if I just execute this code, so you would expect a value of uh, B to be to be two. But then if we execute this code, we see here that our B is one. So what happens here is the difference between the post and the pre increment. So the pre increment, what it does is before it assigns the whole thing here, our whole computation here to be pre, it means before anything happens. So if I were to do that and say plus plus, it means before I assign the value of what is on the uh, right hand side to be do the computation first. So what happens is it first adds the value of uh, a it, or it first adds one to a, then it becomes two, then it assigns that two to b. So that's why when we do this, our output becomes two. But with post increment, what it does is it goes and say before we, we add the value of one to a, let's assign the value of a to b and then we do the addition after so at this point when we come here our a is equal to one so we add that one to b and then we do the increment after so an example that i want to show you that makes sense is imagine if we were we had something like this our a plus one Then I want the output of A, so our A is equal to, then we have the value of A in there. Now, if we execute this, we know that our A is one, then our B is the value of A plus one, which we expect A to be one and B to be two. So here's the output, it's what we expected. Okay, so let's close this. So when it comes to, to increment, one thing that people don't know is, there's actually two procedures that take place. Not only 
are you adding the value of one to what you're incrementing but you're also updating the memory address of the original variable so what i mean is if i were to comment this out and i just want to output let's do this first and i want to output the value of b so now we can see that b is equal to 2 but at this moment of time a is no longer equal to 1 a is also equal to 2 because what happens is when you have something like this not only does it just add 1 to to a before the computation is done or before the assignment is done it also updates the original memory address of a so it also updates the original variable or the original value of this from the value that it is plus one so now if i were to do this our output shouldn't be one and two shouldn't be a is equal to one and b is equal to two our output should be both variables should be equal to two so let's just run this and this is what happened now you can see our a is equal to two and then our b is equal to two this is because that increment the pre-increment or the post increment it updates the original memory address of the value that you're incrementing to the original value plus one so with post increment or pre increment the difference is just that one action ha happens before and one action happens after so now this is a pre increment and now if i were to use a post increment so no matter if the increment is before or after the final goal is a will always be updated to the original value plus one even though the b is assigned the value before or after so in this case our b is assigned the value before the increment it's done and then the increment is done after so this is the post increment so if i were to print this out i should still be getting the value of two and b should be getting the value of one so let's just print that out so now you can see here our a is two and our b is one so what happened here is when we came to this line and we looked at this code so it said before i can increment the value of a to one uh, with with one i want to assign that value of a to b and the value of a at this moment in time was still one so we assigned uh, a to b and after that assignment was done we went and incremented or updated the original value of a with the value that it holds plus one which is which is was one and then it it's now uh, one plus one it, and that's why we're getting the value of of a is equal to two so in the background not only are you adding uh, a plus one but you're also updating the memory address with the new value that you incremented by so the difference here is with pre-increment when you have something like this what happens is you first increment the value of a and then you do the assignment of uh, a to b after but with post increment is you assign the value of a first to b and then you increment the original value of a after the assignment it's done i hope that makes sense so to give you another example i'm going to give you guys something like this and i'll explain it step by step so just get rid of that and let's say we have a value we have an int that it's x and it's equal to four and now let's make our x is equal to or let's just make our output is equal to x plus 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 x and console let's write uh, let's write line and the output is then we give it the value of the output so before i actually execute this code i want you guys to pause the video solve your equation first and then comment your answer and then continue and then i'm going to execute this and we see the output and i'll explain what happened with the 
with the computation. So when we execute this, so our output is 10. Okay, so what happened here with the whole computation is, let me just open Notepad here to do a better uh, explanation. Let's split the screens like that. Maybe I should just put Visual Studio in the side. Then I'll Notepad there. Okay. So what happened is from the get go, we had our value of X, which was equal to four. And then when we came to this line here, when we came to this line here, what happened is X was four, right? So we say, uh, let's say, let's make a new variable and say new answer, which is X, or let's just say new X. So what happened here is, you know that our x is is equal to 4. So what happened here is the new x, we came at this line and it said our x is 4. Because you see here the increment it's done after we get the value of x. So the value of x, it's now 4. And then the post increment here went and updated the original value of x, which is what we, hear as x, we have here as x. So we're going to update that x into 5. And then we say plus, which is the sign here. And before we came here, before we came to X or before we came and did the whole computation here, what happened is X was incremented by one before we could work with it. When X was incremented by one, the original value was again updated by one. At this point in time, our X was five. And then we cancel that five and say it's been updated by one. So now X is six. So what happened here is we have plus six. And that's why we're getting our output as 10 because six plus four is equal to 10. So the very same example works if you work with the decrement. So decrement is just the opposite of incrementing. So it means to subtract by one. So I'm just gonna stop this example and execute the very same example, but now we're going to use the decrement symbol. So we just say minus minus, and then we minus that, and we minus that. So the same as what you did before, before I execute this code, I want you guys to pause the video, work your calculation, and then comment your answer below, and then continue with the video. So now I'm going to execute our video, and we're going to look at our output and explain what happened. So now you can see that our output is 2, and that is very different from what we had before, and it's a very big margin. So now to explain what happened here is, originally, when our, uh, our example started, when our program started, we had x as 4. So our new x now is, let's do that. So we had our x as 4. So when we came to this line and looked at our output, it said before we do anything to x, let's get the value of x. So the value of x was 4 at this moment in time. So the value of x is 4. And then it went and decremented the original value of x by 1. So which updated this x to be 3, right? And then we moved to this uh, uh, subject sign here. So it went to minus. And then before we worked with uh, X, it went and updated the value of X again and subtracted one. So what happened here is from three, it went and subtracted one and then we were left with two. And then now, which means we are left with this. So our value of x or our new x now, it becomes 4 minus 2. So this is the output that we got, which is this output here, which is 2. The concept can be very confusing, especially if you are new to programming or especially if you are new to this concept in particular. So I hope that made any sense. So if there's something that you want me to explain better, just mention that in the description box below and I'll try and explain that concept to you or I'll try and accept that part that you do not understand. So that was it for today's video. I'll catch you guys in the next video when I'm explaining something different. So if you have watched this far, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.